Case 4. The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle. 1. The second morning after Christmas, I visited 221B Baker Street to wish my friend season's greetings. Holmes was stretched out on a sofa with a pile of just-read newspapers crumpled nearby. A chair had been pulled next to the sofa, and on its back hung a very seedy-looking hat. Holmes's magnifying glass lay on the chair's seat. It appeared that he had been studying the hat very closely. Oh, you're busy, I said. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, please, come in, said Holmes cheerfully. That homely-looking hat must have some deadly story tied to it, I said. And you're looking for clues that will help you solve the crime. There's no crime, said Holmes, laughing. You know, Peterson, who works down the street, he found it. That dirty, broken-down hat is an interesting puzzle to be solved. Peterson came here Christmas morning with a hat and a fine, fat goose, which must be roasting at his fire this minute. What happened? I asked. Here are the facts. About four o'clock on Christmas morning, Peterson was coming home from a holiday party. Walking just ahead of him on Tottenham Court Road, was a tallish man, staggering a little and carrying a white goose over his shoulder. As he reached the corner of Gooch Street, a bunch of ruffians surrounded the man, and there was a fuss. One ruffian knocked off the man's hat, and he raised his walking stick to defend himself. He swung it too hard and smashed the shop window behind him. Peterson dashed over to help the man fight off the ruffians, but the man seemed stunned by the smashed window. When he saw a police officer coming, he dropped his goose and took off. The ruffians ran, too. So, Peterson was left with his battered hat and a splendid Christmas goose. Peterson's an honest fellow, I said with surprise. Why didn't he return them to their owner? My dear Watson, that is the problem at hand. There was a tag tied to the goose's leg with For Mrs. Henry Baker printed on it, and the initials HB are written inside the hat. But thousands of bakers and hundreds of Henry Bakers live in the city. So Peterson brought the hat and goose to me, knowing how much I enjoy solving problems. I told him to take the goose home to his family and enjoy it, since it would spoil if not cooked and eaten soon. Meanwhile, I've been studying the hat, searching for clues to its owner's identity. I have some ideas. You know my methods, Watson. Have a look at the hat. What can you deduce about its owner, my friend? I took the tattered thing and turned it over in my hands. It was an ordinary black derby of the usual round shape, very much worse for the wear. Its silk lining had been red, but it was now faded and discolored. There was no maker's name, but... As Holmes had said, the initials H.B. were written on one side. It was cracked, very dusty, and spotted in several places. But someone had tried to hide the stains by smearing them with black ink. I see nothing, I said, handing it back to my friend. You see everything, Watson. You just aren't using what you see. Okay, I challenged. What do you get from what you see? Well, said he, the man is quite intelligent. He was fairly well to do within the last three years, but has fallen upon hard times. He used to be a careful, thoughtful man. He is less so now, suggesting that there may be evil influences on him. Perhaps he drinks too much. That may be why his wife has stopped loving him. Holmes, how can you... He does, however, have some self-respect left. Holmes continued... He leads a quiet life, rarely goes out, is completely out of shape, is middle-aged, he has graying hair that's been cut within the last few days, hair on which he uses lime cream. These are just the more obvious facts to be deduced from this hat. I can't see how you know all that. Why do you say he's quite intelligent? Holmes set the hat on his own head. It was too big. It came over his forehead and rested on the bridge of his nose. He has a very large head, said Holmes. A man with so large a brain must have something in it. His change in fortune, then? This hat is of a style that came in three years ago. 
When it was new, it is of the highest quality. Look at the silk band and lining. If he could afford to buy a hat like this three years ago, he was well off. He hasn't been able to buy one since, however, so it's clear that he's gone down in the world. Okay, but the other things? The many recent stains show that he's not as careful as he used to be. Still, he tried to cover them with ink, showing that he has some self-respect left. That he's middle-aged and has graying brown hair that's been cut recently and that he uses lime cream on it? Look at the lining with the magnifying glass. There are lots of very short hairs, part gray and part brown, with sharp, scissor-cut ends. They're sticky and smell of lime cream. The dust on this hat isn't street dust, but the fluffy brown sort found inside houses. So, it spends more time indoors than his head outside, which means that he rarely goes out. The inner band shows sweat stains, so the owner perspired a lot, the way someone out of shape is likely to do. But his wife Holmes, how can you say that he stopped loving him? This hat hasn't been brushed in weeks, A loving wife would never let her husband leave the house with such a wreck on his head. She would make sure that he looked presentable, even if they didn't have a penny to spare. Maybe he's a bachelor. He was taking the goose home to Mrs. Henry Baker, probably as a peace offering. You have an answer to everything, I said laughing. But since no crime has been committed, all your work seems a waste of energy.